All right, so chapter 19 starts on page 254 and we are um, getting Tom's side of the story now, right? So the prosecution has called their witnesses, right? They called Hectate and Mayella and Bob to get um, sort of the version of the stories that the, U the version of the story that the Ewells are presenting. And then um, Atticus is calling Tom as a witness for the defense, right? Um, so that he can give his side of the story. And he starts off with talking about um, a previous time when Tom was arrested and um, been put in jail. Which might seem like a weird way to start um, testimony, right? If you're trying to like say that this is a good person who um, you know, wouldn't do this crime. But um, why does Atticus mention this? Yeah, so this is kind of like a legal strategy, right? Um, he wants to show that Tom is going to be honest, right? That Tom has no problem admitting to the crimes that he has committed in the past, um, which then hopefully makes him more credible when he denies doing this crime, right? Because he's willing to own up to what he's done in the past. Um, so we just want to show that, you know, Tom has nothing to hide. So uh, we have some notable differences in Tom's testimony from Mayella's testimony. So if you remember Mayella's testimony, she says that, you know, it was like the first time she'd ever really seen him and she asked him to come and break up this wardrobe for her. Um, but he says that that actually happened last spring, right? Um, and then that he has gone there lots of times, right? She's, um, you know, not every time, but quite often when he walks past on his way home from work, she asks him to do little odd jobs around the house for her. And so he has gone in um, inside the fence lots of times, which is different than her testimony. So we already have a difference in their testimony. Um, okay, and then if you look at page 257, well, it starts on page 256, but then goes into page 257. We really see this is a good example of Scout sort of growing up, right? We talked about how uh, Tail Mockingbird is a Bildungsroman, so it's a story of growing up. And um, we see Scout sort of see the world through Mayella's eyes for a minute. Okay, uh, at the bottom of page 256, it says, as Tom Robinson gave his testimony, it came to me that Mayella Ewell must have been the loneliest person in the world. She was even lonelier than Boo Radley, who had not been out of the house in 25 years. When Atticus ad, um, asked, had she any friends, she seemed not to know what he meant and then thought he was making fun of her. Um, she was, um, let's see, da, 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 da. she can, blah, blah, blah. Um, on page 257, it says, Tom Robinson was probably the only person who was ever decent to her. But she said he took advantage of her. And when she stood up, she looked at him as if he were dirt, dirt beneath her feet. All right, so this is a really good example of Scout like looking at the world through someone else's eyes, which Atticus tells her like all the way back in chapter two or three, right? That you don't understand someone until you like put yourself in their shoes basically. Um, and that's what she's doing here, right? She's thinking about like what life must be like for Mayella, right? We know that Mayella tries to keep herself clean and she plants these geraniums, right? She wants to have a different life than what she has and no one will show her any kindness right um we've talked about like the stereotypes of the town and the social status of the town and everything like that um so scout kind of feels bad for her um that this happened and um obviously then bad for the situation that occurred because of it okay um then on page 258 um, we get his version of the events of November 21st, okay? Um, so he basically says that she says that there's an old door that's off its hinges and that he um, asked her to ask him to come fix it. Um, and that he, she kind of comes on to him, right? She grabs him around the legs and starts um, trying to kiss him, right? Um, and then he says that um, Mr. Ewell sees her through the window and yells at her that he's going to kill her, right, for what she is doing. So 
in their version, in the Yule's versions of events, uh, Bob sees Tom attacking Mayella and then chases Tom. In Tom's version of events, uh, Mayella is like on Tom and Bob is yelling at Mayella. And Bob doesn't chase Tom in Tom's version, okay? Tom runs off because he knows that he's in a dangerous situation as a black man at this time period, right? So he runs off and um, leaves them behind, okay? Okay, um, any question about Tom's version of the events? Okay, so then uh, Link Dees gets up and defends Tom. That's who Tom works for. And he says that, you know, he's never given him any trouble. The judge throws him out of the courtroom for getting up and saying that. Um, he's talking about how he doesn't want a mistrial. So basically anything like outbursts like that that might sway the jury could then end up being a reason for like having a mistrial or getting a case overturned or something like that. So he throws him out. And then um, the prosecuting attorney then gets his chance to cross-examine the witness. So, you know, I don't know how much you guys watch like any like law shows or anything, but when you are in a, a juror, a trial, um, the defense or the prosecution can call their witness and then the opposite side gets to cross-examine, right? So then they get to ask their questions. So that's what Mr. Gilmer is doing. And he is certainly not being very kind to Tom, right? He's um, really trying to get into like, why would you help her so much if she never paid you? Like, that's pretty nice of you. Um, you know, what would sort of just, what's the reason behind why you're doing that, right? Um, and Tom, I forgot to write down the page number. Page 264. So Mr. Gilmer says, you're a mighty good fellow, it seems. You did this all for not one penny. And Tom says, yes, sir, I felt right sorry for her. She seemed to try more than the rest of them. You felt sorry for her. You felt sorry for her. Mr. Gilmer seemed ready to rise to the ceiling. Okay, so um, this is a mistake for him to say in this time period, right? If you remember, we talked about like the Jim Crow laws. I mean, a black man couldn't even offer to shake hands with a white man because it would imply that they're equal, right? So for a black man to be saying that he feels sorry for a white person just was seemed completely unacceptable and like out of, I don't know, just not what society deemed appropriate at that time, okay? So this is a big um, issue for him and for his, defense basically um you know putting himself as an equal or even above a white person is going to make him look kind of bad to the jury who probably has a lot of these racist prejudiced opinions right okay um and then the chapter ends with dill having to run out of the courtroom because he's sick right he's feeling sick um, and he's really just feeling sick because of the way that Mr. Gilmer is treating Tom, right? The questions that he's asking and the way that he is treating him. Okay, any questions on chapter 19? All right, so chapter 20 is pretty short, but um, we do learn a few interesting things. So uh, what, do, what gets revealed about Mr. Adolphus Raymond in this chapter? Sorry, what? Yeah, he's just drinking Coca-Cola out of his sack, right? Um, and why would he pretend to be drunk all the time? Okay, yeah, so people can like, it, he said it makes it easier for other people, right? To sort of wrap their heads around why he chooses to live the way that he does. If they can just be like, oh, he's just drunk all the time. Like that's the way he's, you know, eccentric, right? Um, so again, we see this idea of someone who doesn't fit into society's mold of like what people should act like, um, which we talked about again in our pre-reading, that's sort of one of the um, topics of the book is just kind of, you know, prejudice, stereotypes, and it's not always just racial. It's, you know, if someone is eccentric or if someone is seen as doing something that is not what is expected in society, okay? Um, 
Okay, and then we go back inside the courthouse and we hear the uh, closing argument that Atticus gives, okay? Um, which is a great, I think this is just a great little piece of writing here. Um, he's saying on page 271 that what motivated um, Mayella to make this accusation was guilt, okay? Uh, at the bottom he's, of page 271, he says, I say guilt, gentlemen, because it was guilt that motivated her. She has committed no crime. She has merely broken a rigid and time-honored code of our society, a code so severe that whoever breaks it is hounded from our midst as unfit to live with, right? And we just saw that with Dolphus Raymond, right? Because he has, he's in an interracial relationship, right? And he is seen as completely outside of society, right? He is not considered fit to be part of their society. That's why he pretends to just be drunk all the time. Okay, um, and this is the same thing, right? She's trying to find affection from a black man as a white woman um, and couldn't deal with the consequences of that. Uh, she is the victim of cruel poverty and ignorance, but I cannot pity her. She is white. She knew full well what the enormity of her offense, but because her desires were stronger than the code she was breaking, she persisted in breaking it. She persisted and her subsequent reaction is something that all of us have known at one time or another. She did something every child has done. She tried to put the evidence of her offense away from her. But in this case, she was no child hiding stolen contraband. She struck out at her victim. Of necessity, she must put him away from her. He must be removed from her presence from this world. She must destroy the evidence of her offense. So he's basically saying like, just like a child tries to put the blame onto someone else, she's trying to put the blame onto someone else. Okay, and that's why she's making this accusation of Tom. Okay, um, then on page 273, he talks about sort of how um, the witnesses for the state with the exception of the sheriff of Macomb County have presented themselves to you gentlemen and to this court in cynical confidence that their testimony would not be doubted. Confident that you gentlemen would go along with them on the assumption, the evil assumption that all Negroes lie, that all Negroes are basically immoral be beings, that all Negro men are not to be trusted around our woman an assumption one associates with minds of their caliber. Okay, so he's saying that like the Ewells want you to be racist. The Ewells want you to assume that every black person acts this way um, because that's sort of their, he's just kind of saying that they're not good people. And so that's why they want you to think like them. Okay, um, and then he says, that's a lie. He says, you know the truth and the truth is this. Some Negroes lie, some Negroes are immoral. Some Negro men are not to be trusted around women, black or white. But this is a truth that applies to the human race and to no particular race of men. So he's saying like, this is true for everyone. There's good people, there's bad people in every single race of, you know, every single social status, everything. Um, and then he talks about um, how the court is sort of supposed to be this, um, I don't know, this equalizer, right, in the country, um, and how, you know, there's, there really, there can't be true equality, right, someone's going to be faster, someone's going to be smarter, someone's going to be more talented, but he says that the one place where everyone should be equal is in the court of law, um, and that's what he's trying to sort of impose on them, that, you know, this is the one place, like, if, if you want to be have your opinions, your stereotypes, your prejudices, whatever, but here in the courtroom, you shouldn't have them, okay? Um, and we'll see how that goes. <laughs> and then at the end of the chapter, we see Calpurnia coming up the middle of the aisle um, towards Atticus, which will not be good for the kids, right? They're not supposed to be at the court. So the chapter ends with that little bit of a cliffhanger, okay? Any questions on chapter 20? Okay. So chapter 21 and 22, that's what you're gonna read today. It's honestly not that much. It's, it's only like 14 pages. So you should be able to finish it pretty easily, but you do have the weekend too, if you need to, um, there's no, additional reading other than those two chapters.